Hello, welcome. Uh, try this problem out and then press play and we'll, we'll solve it together. All right, so here we've got a question about completing the square. They want to know uh, which of these equations down here could lead us to this step right here. And at first, this is a really scary looking question. We've got x minus 5 half squared equals 13 fourths. And the question is, oh my gosh, how can we get to uh, this from any of these choices? So what you might start doing is just look at the choices and complete the squares to see which would lead to this result. So we'll do that, and we'll, actually, we'll look at some patterns to then figure out how we could find it even faster. So I want to actually go to choice 4 first. I want to complete the square. So we have x squared minus 5x. And the fir my first step is going to be subtracting 3 from both sides. That helps me. You don't have to do that first. But what that does is now when I complete the square, remember to complete the square, you take your b value next to x, divide up by 2, and square it and add to both sides. What this will do, beautifully, of course, is that it gives you a perfect square trinomial every single time. So negative 5 divided by 2, that is 2.5. And that squared is 6.25. Um, but I'm thinking, you know, I see these fractions up here. Let's not even use decimal. Let's use fractions. That'll help us. So this would be negative 5 over 2 squared. And to square a fraction, it's just negative 5 squared, 25, over 2 squared, 4. Um, we're adding 25 fourths to both sides. So we'll leave it in fraction form because they have it written in fraction form. Now you have a perfect square here, so it's just some number squared or some expression squared that would give you this. And the nice thing about um, a perfect square trinomial is that the factored form is just going to be, in this case, if you have a second power for x, x, and then if we have a negative sign here, it's going to be minus, and it's going to be the square root of 25 fourths, which is 5 halves. Um, you know, as a counterexample, if there was a plus here, then this would also be a plus. So that takes us to our first shortcut. I know it can't be 1 or 2, because when you're completing the square in the process, this positive sign right here would mean you have a positive sign inside the parentheses. But we don't have that here. We have a negative sign. So the first sign has to be negative, right? Now the next thing to notice as we finish this completing the square, if we add negative 3 to 25 fourths, well, I know negative 3 um, is, is negative 12 over 4. Same thing. Plus 25 fourths. If I simplify this, what's that? Hmm. Well, that's 13 fourths, right? And this is the step that we're looking at. This tells us that we found the answer, which is choice four, right? And um, how can we tell that it's not, it's, it's not seven, but three? Um, I guess what we could have done is to think about the fact that when you subtract three over here, right? If you know you're trying to get 13 fourths, right? How could we get that? Well, we can think 3, right, or negative 3, because we're going to the opposite side of the equation, just like we did here. Uh, negative 3 plus, it's going to be always plus this thing squared, working backwards, 25 fourths, right? We can say that that would get us negative 13 fourths, whereas 7 plus 25 fourths, or negative 7, excuse me, plus 25 fourths would not. But I feel like that shortcut is harder than completing the square itself. So uh, when you're doing these problems, you might look for a shortcut in the first sign. Remember, if it's positive here, you need a positive sign in the parentheses. If it's negative, then it would match. And then it's OK to just try these two, complete the square, and see which one matches. In the end, it's choice four. Thanks.